Hi guys and welcome to 3D Print Tech Design. Today we have a continuous look at the Cooper M23 scanner. In a previous video in the review, you can check out over here or somewhere down in the description. Um, we took a look at the whole desktop solution, but the manufacturer said after they sent me the scanner that they had a new software to check out when it comes to free scan. Spoiler alert, the new software wasn't really better, maybe a little bit easier, but I'll be looking at both the original and new software. So in this video we will be looking at the free scan mode, which is putting markers or using the features to track objects in scanning. So for example, I will be scanning this 3D printer here, trying to make some better covers for this uh, filament holder, or maybe just scan that area and see what we can use that for. I will also try to scan this black, very dark, very difficult box, and try to put markers around it, which is kind of time consuming, but I really want to get an object around. And since you don't really want to scan soft objects, turning them around, I think a hard case would be probably the best. So let's check out what's new in the software. Okay, so I'm just starting the new software, version one. Whoa, okay, so if you checked out my review, you'll see that on the left side, this is overexposed. The problem with the new software is that don't really have any settings for that. We, we got settings over here, and then we, we can't really do anything with the camera. Okay, so this is mostly for the, uh, how it filters the, the raw data when it creates a mesh. Calibrate camera, no, that's only the, the whole uh, alignment of the camera. Mesh optimization, nope, can't do that. Uh, let's create a new product. Yeah, okay, so here we, we can choose what we want to do. I can say that the object is tint, common or dark. That, that's not really enough. So we have a pretty white object right now and I'm going to try to use the feature first. So let's click OK. You can see that it does it a little bit better, but th this is not good enough. Um, I'm going to try to do a scan. Let's see what kind of data that we get from this. O okay, I mean, let's try to move the scanner a little bit and see what we get. It, it does it fast, but it's way too overexposed. The, the, the patterns aren't good at all. Let's see, let's create a new, a new scan here. You can see it, it, it's, it's good on the dark object. Um, so let, let's just create a new one here. Just to see if they somehow manage to, to do things a little bit wrong. Oops, that's not the new product, the new projects. Let's select dark instead. Yeah, no, that's only going to make it worse. <laughs> Even on the dark object, it's almost overexposed now. So that's, that it, it's really good, I mean, that we get the, the options. I mean, this is for the dark, uh, that, that, that's a completely dark object. Let's say common here, see how dark it is. Let's see if we can get anything on common. Yeah, that's, that's okay. Um, yeah, that's totally okay. Hmm, all right, so, so for this, to actually scan this part, I'm going to use the old software. Uh, I'm pretty sure that would be better. So let's uh, shut this down and restart. Okay, so I fired up the, the old software and I'm planning to now do the whole camera collaboration. Again, this is uh, something you can check out via the YouTube video. Let's do our first scan here and uh, let's go from there. So again, with the free scan mode, we'll, we'll click on manual scan and then we'll just select feature registration. That, that's really all we need and uh, we click OK. And we get our first angle. Now the surfaces looks good. I could probably turn up the light a fraction. 10 will probably be good. All right, let's scan another one. Just in the same area to get some sort of overlap. Let's move the scanner a little bit. And the next angle, and this is basically how it's done. So we take a lot of angles, as many as possible, and we we just align them. And I try to not move too much in the beginning because I want to keep as much detail as possible so we have enough data to track on later on. You can even see how, how well the black part is now. It's actually much easier to, to get some data of that as well and to, yeah, when we do our 3D work, we can actually measure a little bit from it. Okay, so let's try to move it down a little bit. Something like that. We still want to need, still want to have the, the overlapping. And there you can see we got a failure, <laughs> a pretty severe one. All right, so one of the problems here is that we don't have any markers. So even if I go a little bit more on the edge here, again, I've, I've already screwed up the, the whole file here. So let's see if we even can recover it. Yeah, that's not looking good. Let's remove those two. 
and we should have s at least some data to track on. So let's let's try to scan up here and see if we can get that to stick to the other ones. Nope. It looks like we really do need to use the markers. So that's the problem with the feature that it doesn't work on all types of objects. So yeah, with that said, let's put on some markers. Alright, so we are making a new project here. As you can see, I put on the markers. We are going to calibrate the camera a little bit more. That's probably good. I think that was the more or less the same settings that we used before. So when we now do a manual scan, we will use mark registrations instead. I'm going to try to move this somewhere around the uh, centrum. Here, let's start there. I think that's a lot of dots to, to start off the first scan with. Let's see how many we register. That's good. Very good. Let's move the scanning down slightly so we can overlap with more dots and try to register as much as possible. So I want to do it a little bit slow so make sure that we build up the, the database of markers and then we can get a little bit more crazy with the different angles and, and all that fun stuff. So you can see that I'm trying to take the whole, the whole area around. So now I can start to get a little bit more creative and doing different angles, getting deeper into the scan, getting more data. There's a quite big hole there, so I'm not expecting too, too much of a result. All right, so I'm gonna speed this up a little bit. See, we have like a whole area in here. We can try to get deeper in that by, by twisting the scanner around. You can see the patterns are now reaching a little bit better in. And in theory, we should get a better scan results of exactly that area. And I'm pretty sure that we are fairly happy with this scan now. All right, so that's that's the whole, that's the everything. So we are actually going to take all of these here, select them, click on global registration. So the computer has to think a little bit and it will match all of these frames together. It might take a few minutes, so I'm just going to let it continue. Okay, so the fusion is ready. Let's click okay. See if we can spin this baby around. Look at that, we even got into some of these angles here, that was really difficult. Um, thanks to moving the scan around, we, we didn't get all of the, the surfaces, of course, because we can't reach, can't reach infinity with this scanner. But we did get a lot of data. This is clearly enough for making some sort of spool holder adapter thingy thingy. Ooh, we also got some data in here that is interesting. Mm -hmm. All right, looks like we have one bad scan, but I can't figure out which one it is. Anyways, we are going to mesh this one here. So we'll click on mesh. I will um, not fill the holes. Let's try that in another software. We will use medium for now because we don't really need much more than that right now. Again, we only want to figure out where things are. Let's click OK and wait for the meshing. Okay, so there we have the mesh. Not bad at all. I think that's enough for doing some signs on. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't call it signs. Uh, we did lose, lose some data, so um, yeah, probably do some darker scanning as well and, and attach those two. We can actually try that out. We are actually going back into the scanning. Going to the dark areas. Let's see. So let's increase the brightness here. Let's see if we can actually get something on that dark object. It's going to be very, very bright for everything else. But I, I have a suspicion that we can actually use to make a manual scan up there. Move it slightly, create a new one. So yeah, as you can see there, we are filling everything up a little bit. 
it's, it's gonna be noisy, but hopefully it will be okay. So I kind of want to mesh these separately because I think that will help out later. This feature here, that when we mesh these ones, we are going to do that and fill some holes. Hopefully we can re preserve some of the data. If nothing else, we have the, the point raw data that we can use as well. Well, obviously not perfect. <laughs> But it's, uh, it's probably a little bit more than I would get anyways. Okay, so we have these two meshes now. They are not joined together. And I think that's probably a good idea for now. <laughs> I think that's a really good scan. Um, of course, we could do more time. And this scan here is probably one that went off a little bit. And I haven't really figured out which one that is. But this is a great representation of what we need to do some sort of modeling. So make sure you subscribe for that because that will be a separate video. Now let's head over to the black box and see if we can do any scanning on that. Okay, so I have started to cover this box um, with markers. The plan is to do a first test scan around. Just make sure that we have enough markers. So I, I've decided to keep the handle in this position. And the thing is that I can move this box around because I have no markers elsewhere. And uh, I will use a combination of moving both the scanner and both the box itself for the case in this, in this case. <laughs> Fun. All right, so I think I'm going to start over here and then start to build overlap down on the side and on the front and, and around just to make sure that we get proper data. So let's set everything up in the software and let's go. We have this set up and I think all we really got to do is uh, make the first scan and see what we get. It looks good. I'm going to move the scan around a little bit, try to get some markers on the other side. So we keep getting and filling up with, uh, with dots and markers because the markers are really important to, to get a great coverage. There we go, starting to get some coverage. That's nice. So we should have enough to, to start scanning down a little bit over there. Awesome. Let's get more markers from above. Yeah, basically this is a, a clicking a lot of scanning game. So I'm probably going to speed up the footage a little bit and uh, try to get as much as, as possible done. So we finished scanning this. Uh, it, it took a while, so I couldn't really bother to scan the whole box. But I scanned it 360 around, which should really test the whole alignment of different scans function. Uh, so the whole area around this model is, is quite intense. Yeah, you can probably see some markers all around. But yeah, I couldn't really be bothered to do a fully complete scan because it, it, it took a while. So you can see I used one paper and another with markers and we are working with around a hundred uh, different single scans. So uh, yeah, it's gonna process for a while and we'll just have to take it from there. Looking at the mesh here, we can see that there are still some, some shadows, some spots where we didn't reach with the scanner, but overall I think it looks really good. Um, obviously there is one or two mismatches between frames and you can see that traced here in the mesh. But overall, it looks very good. All right, so looking at the data, the free scan mode is, it, it's very good, but it's also quite difficult to actually get spot on. So I'm looking forward to testing the handheld scanner, which of course is in another price range, but it is, uh, should be much easier on these types of objects. So free scanning isn't for all, but it's important to note that you can do it. So if you are faced with an object that is bigger than you uh, suspect, you can of course 3D scan that as well. 
Um, of course, it takes some time putting on the markers and I found it that it's easier to have a path that you follow than jumping back and forth all the way. So when I made the second scan on the, on the case, I used half, um, uh, half the amount of images and I got better result because it didn't jump around very much. I took a, a, like a 360 scan, getting all the markers, filled in the different areas, and that was really it. So I believe that the scanner works better when you are overlapping the previous area all the time and, and keep the scanning more or less like on a path instead of jumping back and forward. Um, because I suspect there is some slippage, some tracking loss between each image, even using the markers. So if you have a path, that will be easier to follow. And especially if you go around an object, uh, if, if you start on one side and when you come to the other side and you're faced on, th this tracking could mean that things are a little bit off. So it has difficulty like figuring out how things should be. The global registration helps a lot with that, but even during scanning, if you have things that are not aligned and, they think, and the scanner thinks that it is, that will cause some issues with the whole uh, like tracking thing. So, Free scanning is super good. The new software needs some more features, even though it's maybe a little bit easier. But I think that I will stick with the old one, as you saw. Thanks for watching this video. If you didn't check out the first review, make sure you check out that link down below or in the end card here somewhere. Make sure you subscribe. There will be a bunch more content about 3D scanning, 3D printing, design, technology, and you know everything about that. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!